Thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Are you looking for a reliable and affordable VPS hosting? Hostinger offers an exclusive Black Friday deal on their VPS subscription plan. You can get a 12 month VPS hosting plan for just $6.99 per month, which is a whopping 63% discount. But wait, there is more. You can also use my code, which is code with Ari, to get 10% discount on top of the discount that Hostinger offers. Don't miss out on this amazing offer and take your website to the next level with Hostinger's powerful VPS hosting. What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to the fourth video of my Laravel Livewire video series where we will be looking at how we could work with forms. Now up until this point, we really just had a look at how the flow of a Livewire application works. What I want to do right now is creating a new task through the input field that we have and the button that we got right next to it. So let's navigate to PHPStorm for a moment. Now let's open our task index. And what I want to do right here is replacing add with save, which says a little bit more than add. And naming methods to their action is very important. Now, quick note, we could create a completely different view for the task create page, but I think that that is not really necessary in this case, since we simply got one input field. But if we had more, I would recommend using a full page component for it. Now we have linked through our input field right here using wire model the name property to our, where is it? Name property right here, excuse me. Then for our button, we have said that it should trigger the add method when someone clicks on it, but instead of add, we're gonna say save. Now this is static. And this means that whenever we use our button component, all LifeWire components should, use a should have a save method defined. So well, let's get rid of it. And let's pass in a variable named click. And then inside our task index, we could pass in a second variable, which will be colon click, which will be a string of save, which will trigger the wire click right here. Now let's test it out real quick. Let's navigate to Google Chrome. Let's say task three, click on new task. Task three has been triggered inside the save method. Now let's define the save method inside our component. Well, let's navigate to our task index, get rid of our DD. And first right here, we're going to use our task model, and then we're going to access the static method named create. Now we only need to retrieve the value of the name. So we could pass it in as a string. But since we have the user ID as well, which we actually have to add static, I'm gonna pass in an array, say that the user ID should be one, and the name should be coming from our property named this name. Then I'm also going to add a simple redirect by saying return this redirect to the route method. Well, we actually haven't defined the named route. We're going to name it tasks. Then inside our web.php file on the first route, we're going to chain the name method to it and the name will be tasks. So let's give it a try. Let's navigate to the browser, refresh it, create a task tree, click on new task. And as you could see, it has redirected us to the task endpoint. So it's basically refreshing the page. But in most cases, you want some kind of magic which will add a new row without a refresh. That's something which we will do in the next episode, where we're gonna have a look at actions. For now, you'll see that a task has been inserted, but without any validation. So let's have a look at that, since we're kind of getting used to the flow of LiveWire. If we navigate back to PHPStorm and open our task index, you don't add validation in LiveWire as you do in Laravel controllers, where you basically can say, well, the request object that we have, Change the validate method to it and validate, let's say, the name on a string or it should be required. In LifeWire, you need to go right above the property that you want to validate. And in our case, it will be the name. And you can add a attribute to it. So once again, hashtag brackets and the attribute name is rule. Let's pull it in. And once you add the rule attribute, the validation will automatically be applied to the property value anytime you update the server side. So let's for now say that the name should be required. We're not done yet because we do have to tell our save method that it should enable the validation rules that we have added right above our property. 
So inside our save method, the first thing that we're going to do is say, well, this validate. So it should basically validate everything that comes in first. Now we're not done yet because we do need to make sure that we output our error message in case there is one right below our input field. So what we could do is navigating to our task index and right below our button component. Let me align this for a moment. We could create a new div where we're going to say, well, it has a class of text red 500. We're going to add an error directive in blade named name. So it should check for the name. If it has, we're going to create a new span. Let me actually align this on the line below of the actual message that is being passed through. And we're going to close off our error directive by saying at and error. If we navigate back to the browser, refresh it, try to create a new task without adding a name, you will see that we have been prompted with an error message without a page refresh. Now, if we open our task index for a moment, you will see that we have passed in a string inside of our rule method, where we can only pass in a one rule. Now, don't worry, because just as working with Laravel forms, you could pass in multiple validation rules by passing in an array. So let's say that it should be required. It should have a maximum of 10 characters and it should be a string. Or you could use another method, which is completely removing everything that we just added, including the array, pass in a string again, and add pipes to define separate validation rules. So let's say required, pipe max of 10, and it should be a string. So let's navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, try to create a task. You'll see that the name field is required, but let's say that it has more than 10 characters. Click on new task. You'll see that the second error has been prompted, which says that the name field must not be greater than 10 characters. Now, before we move on to the next topic, I want to show you how you could easily show validation errors as the user fills out the form. So let's navigate back to our view for a moment. So our task index. Now let's look for our input field right here. And there are two methods on how you could do this. The first method is adding the dot life right after the wire model attribute. What this will do is sending network requests as the user fills out the form. If validation fails, the property won't be updated on the server and a validation message will be shown to the user. If we navigate to the browser, refresh it, click on our input field, add a long name. So let's say again, this is a very long name. You will see that while typing, LifeWire has added the validation on the input field without refreshing the page. And if we hit the arrow back until we hit 10 characters, you will see that the error message has been disappeared. Now the second method is replacing the dot life with dot blur. And dot blur in LifeWire is an alternative to the dot life method for showing validation errors as the user fills out the form. By using dot blur on wire column model, LifeWire will send network requests and run the appropriate validation rules when the input field loses focus. This allows for real-time validation and immediate feedback to the user if there are any validation errors. Same thing, just slightly different. Now let's move on to the next method, which is showing a loading indicator. Now, since we're on localhost and we only submit a couple columns, which is the name, ID, and timestamps, the loading time isn't that much. But LiveWire allows you to easily add a loading indicator once you submit a form. By default, LiveWire will automatically disable submit buttons and mark inputs as read only while a form is being submitted. This prevents the user from submitting the form again while the first submission is being handled. However, it can be difficult for users to detect this loading state without extra affordance in your application's UI. So let's navigate to our button component for a moment because we do need to add it right here. And let's actually navigate to the browser for a moment. And let's search for Flowbyte. I'm simply going to use a component from Flowbyte right here. Let's search for Spinner. Now let's open the first one where you will see a spinner right here. So let's copy the entire div. Now we're not going to paste it right here, 
because I'm going to create a new component. So let's say X spinner and let's close it off. Let's create a new component. Let's name it spinner.blade.php. Paste it right here. And the only thing I want to change right here is the fill blue to pink. Now let's navigate to our button component because we're not done yet. Let's copy it, create a div, paste it inside of it. Then we need to add a trigger. So right inside of our div, we're gonna say wire colon loading. So let's navigate back to Google Chrome, localhost, refresh it. Or let's create a new task named task four and pay attention to the right side of our button where you will see that a loading indicator has been shown for a millisecond. Now I want to wrap up this video where we talked about live wire forms, validation, a live validation and adding a spinner. I want to have a look at a very important topic in LifeWire, which is the use of actions. If you do like my content and you want to see more, please hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.